Good evening. <laughs> Welcome in. I'm Rochelle. This is Brampton Gardner. And um, it's been a while. I haven't done a live in, I think it's been almost a month. It's been, it's been a bit, it's been a bit. Um, you know what? We've had a lot going on and um, we had some, you know, a few things happen last week and I was just like, you know, I'm just not, I just don't have it in me <laughs> to, to come on and, you know, try and be, um, engaging, I guess I should say, or entertaining. I just was, I was very tired and exhausting, um, exhausting, hard few days. And so, um, that's probably that. Um, so anyways, enough about that. Uh, we have had absolutely horrible weather here in Southern Ontario. It has been pretty much the whole time for like a week and cool, cool temperatures. We've been in the forties most of the time. I think today we hit 51 and it was just kind of a light drizzle. So I actually did go outside and get quite a bit done in the greenhouse, but, um, Hey, Nicole, welcome in. How are you doing? I cannot believe your tulips. Mine. I only have a few open and, um, and, uh, that's it. I, I did a garden tour. The video will come out probably tomorrow. Um, yeah. And it's like, they, they, they're not even fully open yet at all. Hey, Mike, welcome in. How are you doing tonight? Hello. So it's been cold. It's been rainy. It's been windy. It's been miserable. And tomorrow it's going to be, I think, 51 and sunny. And then by this weekend, we're looking in the mid 60s. And I think Sunday, Monday, it's saying 70. The whole next week's forecast, I'm seeing sunshine, except for next Tuesday is saying some rain, but it doesn't mean it's all day like we've had. So like lately, I've been checking the weather. I'm like, is it raining in Brampton? And it'll be like, yes, it's raining from now until midnight, <laughs> the day after tomorrow. And it's like, no. So, um, I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping we get some of that heat Nicole's had and uh, we can see some color out front. So the bulbs are coming up and... They've, they're, they've got, you know, buds, but they're not open here yet. Um, the allium are getting pretty big, so hopefully those will shoot up. I have not seen any blooms on my sangria punch pansies. The frizzle sizzles have been blooming since before I put them out, and the sangria punch are still not blooming. So I don't know what's happening with them. Hopefully this sunshine, I mean, there's enough rain, so they're... They shouldn't need any, any water. Um, they should have enough nutrients from the rain. And then hopefully the sunshine and the heat coming will be enough to get them to start showing off a little bit. Like I put in all this work and all this effort and I've waited all this time and nothing. So I finally did go out and uh, into the, to the greenhouse and I started some more seeds out in the greenhouse today. Um, I, had, I didn't want to do it any sooner because the small seedlings or st seeds that are starting, you kind of have to check on them, you know, at least once a day or a couple of times a day. And when it's just nasty, rainy, cold weather, the thought of greenhouse and get in there was just, I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to bother with that. So I'm going to wait until the weather's nicer and it's just easier to go in and out of the greenhouse and not have to worry about all of that. So today I did plant my um, zucchini squash. It's like a straight neck summer squash it's supposed to be a short day so we'll see uh and armenian cucumbers and okra the only thing i didn't plant oh and another kind of cucumber which i cannot pronounce and but i forgot to plant my lemon cucumbers and they were in the pack and i just didn't see them in there so i didn't plant and then i potted up on um, all of my coleus because I have room in the greenhouse. I had room for a whole full tray. So I just did a whole full tray of soil blocks and I'm like, whatever fits, fits. And I'm going to just pot them all up. So the coleus all fit. And I have, um, what, one, two, three of, of squares left that I can pot up some of the other stuff. So I don't know if I'm going to bother with the impatience because they're doing so well and they're like a block. And I think that maybe they'll just stay where they are. <laughs> so you guys want to see the impatience? So I went and I, if you recall, um, a couple weeks ago, I went in and I just chopped everything down. I did the impatience and then the petunias I, I propagated as well. 
um, but I just chopped them all back. But here are the petunias. So I'll show you these guys first. So these are the these are the burgundy, photo finish burgundy, and these are the lime by color from Stokes Seeds, the Southern Ontario Seed Company. I would love to go and check out their um, trial gardens that they have, like that you can tour through. That'd be cool. So those are doing really good. We've seen blooms on those before, and then I had to chop them off, and they're back now. And I, they smell so good. I love. I can smell. Them. Oh, so, sorry. It's right next to my bed. Okay, when I started this tray, there were just two of the 20 cell packs of impatience each. So I did 20 and 20. So just two little squares. And I had other seeds on the tray. Well, the other seeds, some of them either they didn't germinate or again, I've had to pull them off or they were my cool flowers. So they've already come off. So this whole tray is now only impatience. And they are fabulous. Hey, welcome in, Jen and Steve. How are you guys doing tonight? So the I can't even tell anymore. So this is the front. The front half are the original seeds. So these are the original ones. And then the ones back here, these are the ones I cut and just stuck in the soil. I just cut them and stuck them in the soil. And those are the and they're some of those are blooming too. So I have two varieties. The this one here is called Utopia Mix. And so it has all different shades. So we go from like a hot pink to more of like a purpley pink. And then we have like a nice lavender here. I'm sorry, because the camera's just not picking up too well when I move it around too much. And then um, the other one, this whole side is called, I'm like hitting my microphone, I'm sorry. This whole side is called Carmine Rose. And the colors just are not picking up on the camera. This is just like the brightest hot pink. Like it's almost the exact same shade as my lipstick, which my lipstick shows up on here, but these guys don't. I mean, it's just the color is just beautiful on these. So I, I cannot believe how many, 20 of each seeds that I put in the soil and then they've just gone banana pants as nicole would say and then this one i don't know what this one's doing there's like just one <laughs> it's like the op <laughs> i don't know what it's doing it just sitting straight up in the middle so uh but they're super happy so that's with them because i won't have room to pot all of them up because i mean i'm looking at there's probably third a minimum of 30 of each um variety in there i would say so I don't really have room to pot them all up. So I'm just going to leave them all for happy. Um, and the thing about impatience is they like to be fairly wet. Like you can't really overwater them. So um, I'll, I'll be putting them out in the greenhouse though. Um, they'll probably be able to go on a lower rack because they don't really need as much sun. So they'll be out there and I'll just try and make sure I flood them with water so that they don't are super tired from digging and burning and planting oh that sounds amazing that sounds amazing i will be out we'll be doing that that will be me in about three weeks so i think two weeks from this week so tuesday this coming tuesday is may 9th my last frost date and i can usually plant out my cooled hearty my mm -mm, warm what am i trying to say warm my warm plants, um, frost tender. There we go. Uh, I usually wait till about two weeks after that, which usually in Canada is the May long weekend. So we have a long weekend in May. It is usually on the, it's Queen Victoria's birthday. And it's like the, what, the third Monday of May. So the date actually bounces around a lot, but a lot of times it's on the 24th is called the May 2-4 weekend because that's what they call a case of beer. A 24 case of beer is a 2-4. 2-4 beer. Grab me a 2-4 beer. So the May long weekend is the 2-4 weekend, otherwise known as Victoria Day. And um, apparently Canada is the only place that celebrates Queen Victoria's birthday. 
nope, no one else has the birthday, <laughs> just Canada. So uh, we'll take it. It's a day off. And uh, so that will be coming up on the, I want to say it's the 18th this year or something or 19th. I can't remember exact date. Hey, welcome in Ecocentric Homestead. How are you doing tonight? Oh my gosh. I keep, so I keep the um, YouTube chat open because I can, it's easier to, to read and things come in faster. <laughs> so I keep clicking on it to try and get people's comments up on the screen. And I, instead of clicking, it's been a while. I haven't done this in a while. I'm, I'm rusty. <laughs> so welcome in. You transplanted some tomato plants into grow bags today and planted more tomato seeds. Wow. So you are in, um, Carlene, where are you at? And welcome in Carlene. Nice to have you here. Uh, Victoria was awesome. Well, we're, we're celebrating her birthday. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you would think England would sell it, celebrate it or some of the other, you know, former colonies or something, but no, just, just Canada. And actually, um, they've been discussing this online. Actually, it was because someone was like, oh, because my husband was like, well, maybe they were just looking for like a nice long weekend in May and they just picked that um, as a way to get a day off kind of a thing. But no, um, it was around before Canada was, it was like 16 years before Canada became an actual country when they started this holiday. So Palm Coast, Florida, I actually lived in Florida for about three years. Um, I was in the Fort Lauderdale, um, Pompano Beach, um, Boca Raton area. So I was in Pompano for about a year and a half and then Boca for a year and a half. But I worked in Fort Lauderdale and I absolutely loved it. I loved Florida. Florida in a harpy. <laughs> I loved it. I know people say all kinds of disparaging things about Florida, but the weather was amazing. The food was amazing. You can go to the beach all the time. Like, yeah, I, I loved Florida. Uh, hence the bright floral colors that I always wear. <laughs> so I did pot up um, that was another part of the video I did today. I potted up all of my tomatoes. Not that they like really needed it in the sense that they were outgrowing their, their things. They're about this tall, you know, they were in their second, third set of leaves, but, um, outside with the sun and this heat that is coming because once it's in the greenhouse, it gets really warm now. Um, it doesn't take a lot of sun for it to really get heat, heated up in there and they're not going to get enough light. Well, they, they'll get enough light under my grow lights, but they're going to get way more light out in the greenhouse. So that's going to help them. I was like getting them started. So by popping them up into the two inch soil blocks, uh, I don't have to worry about them drying out as much as I do in the smaller ones. So that's the main reason I potted them up into the two inch soil blocks, just so I don't have to worry about them and they can get out there and they can grow and get more you know, food and fertilizer from there. They're ready to move back to Kentucky. Kentucky, interesting. Been to Kentucky once years and years ago. We went to visit friends in Paducah. And unfortunately at the time I was not sewing and I did not appreciate the fact that she took us into like this world famous fabric store. I was in my early 20s. Why are we here? I'm starving. Let's go eat. And then I started sewing and now I'm like, oh my God, someday I hope to go to Paducah and check out the giant, <laughs> the giant quilt star in Paducah. Uh, so yes, I, I did not appreciate it at the time. So um, actually speaking of sewing, I was this week. So I put them on here thinking this was a great idea. So this is a, you can tell something's homemade because there's always threads on it. <laughs> Oh, you're from Paducah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So um, I made my sundress. So it's a, it's a pretty simple sundress. It's just like knee length. It's got these sweet little flutter sleeves on it though. So that was a nice fun detail. And then the back, oh, she's got a shirt hanging on here. Sorry. <laughs> and then the back just has some elastic. It is a woven, but I didn't need to use any... Um, closures or any time. It doesn't need any zippers or anything like that. And then um, pockets. Who doesn't want pockets on a dress? Hey, Jesse, welcome in. How are you? Yeah, Hancock's fabric. I know I went there and I did not appreciate it. And now I'm feeling so bad about it. Um, 
Now this I've shown before, I've shown some pictures and you know what, I actually had a video and I don't know if I ever posted the video of it, but this is a beautiful, um, it was, it's a maxi skirt that I made uh, with a matching, like a strappy tank top. I did show pictures of that on my Instagram, but I didn't show this. So this is another sundress I made her. And this is just a, it's kind of almost like a, a I guess you could say like a tent dress shape. It's just got the straps in the front and it's just, it's super flouncy and it's super comfy. So I made her that and I can't find anywhere to hook this on now. And then I made the top that I'm wearing. I posted pictures on my community tab. And then I did two pattern tests this week as well. So one pattern test, I won't be showing you the pictures of. But I did post a few pictures on my community tab as well. And those were some brand new underwear pattern for my friend over at Polly Woggles Patterns. And it's a unisex boy girl pattern. It has three different styles. And then the other pattern test I did was a pair of shorts. So these shorts have detailing on the side. It's got a split here on the side. I did post a picture of these as well. It's fully lined with these um, athletic shorts that are underneath a couple inches longer. So this gives you some modesty. You don't have to worry about them being too short. And then if you saw my short, I have the pockets. So happy with how the pattern matching turned out on those. So these are just cute little shorts that she'll be able to wear to school and to gym class. So I've been very, very busy <laughs> this week um, sewing because I can't be out in the garden. So I've been sewing and I actually printed out a pants pattern for me, sewing pants. Um, I'm like between like two, three sizes. So I'm going to have to like be meshing and doing all kinds of crazy stuff to the pattern. So I printed it out, but I haven't got the nerve up um, to, to cut into anything yet. You are working on your fifth hexagon quilt. That is amazing. I um years ago i've done a couple like small ones and i one of them i did was with the um the paper piecing the english paper piecing and then the other one i actually cheated and i found a youtube video on how to sew the hexes with the sewing machine <laughs> and it, it wasn't perfect doing it by hand for sure um pockets on a dress my yeah I love dresses. I absolutely love dresses. They're so comfortable and you don't have to worry about matching tops and bottoms. <laughs> and they just, I just, I love them. I wear them all summer long if I can. Um, organizing. <laughs> Mike, I think Mike has more season just about anybody right now. I need to cook, but lazy. So just coffee right now. Um, you, okay, mostly the English. Um, I liked, I liked it. I enjoyed doing it. Um, uh, I just, I'm not great with hand. I love, I love my machine, <laughs> but it was really nice to have something like to take with you, um, to kind of work on, on the go. Like other people will take knitting or crochet. Um, when you're doing the, the, the hand sewing, you can definitely bring it with you, which is really nice. I should do a bit more of the English paper piecing. I really enjoyed it. Um, I have the, took a class and then she gave us the templates and the templates she printed them out on this like um it wasn't really a cardstock but it was kind of like a plasticky thing a plasticky paper I can't describe it really well but it makes it reusable so you can just you can pin right through it and everything and then you can pop them out and keep reusing. um you know the thought of having to cut out a gazillion hexes um because I don't have like a, a cricket or anything like that. Send me your measurements, Jesse. I'll get right on. Aren't you and uh, Scott supposed to be wearing like um, caftans or something? Is that, or is that for the cruise? Weren't you guys supposed to be wearing? I think I remember something. I remember something about you and Scott wearing, wearing some moo's or something. Hmm. I just remember that now. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, today is going to be the last day I'm going to be complaining about my weather, I think for a while. Um, I think hopefully we're finally getting some nice, decent weather and, um, oh yeah, now you remember that, don't you? Exactly. 
<laughs> oh yes, there was a thing. It was a while ago though. It was a while ago. And I don't know, were you guys supposed to do it when he was down visiting? Was he supposed to wear it on his cruise? Was it? I remember. Hmm. I have a feeling Jesse remembers and he's just compl completely uh, lying to us about not remembering. Yeah. Oh, that could be. When? That was like last. Oh, my gosh. No, that was a long, long time ago because it was Jesse, Scott and E3 Farmstead. I believe that's. I believe that's who was in on the whole Moo Moo thing. So we're going back a good year and a half. At least that just came into my head. Oh, we're going to have to make that happen. <laughs> we're going to have to make that happen on the cruise. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Lisa's probably in the background cringing going, oh my God, no. <laughs> All right. What else was I going to talk about? Um, that's it. No. <laughs> Does anyone have any? Um, Dexter today. Oh my goodness. He, he is not used to being out in the garden again. So when we're at work, he sleeps most of the day, right? And he goes in his little room and he sleeps. So we were working, um, the rest of the week and so I was upstairs in the office for a bit and then I would make lunch. And then I was out in the greenhouse most of the afternoon, starting seeds and potting seeds up. And there's not really anywhere for him to be in. Like he can be on the ground, just walking around, but there's nowhere for him to sit or relax in the greenhouse. And I'm sitting in the chair. So he did. Well, you no, you can't sit on my lap when I'm potting stuff up. It's just not going to work. And so then he decided he wanted to be in the house, but he wanted me in the house. So I finally ended up having to leave the screen door open, even though it was kind of cold out because he, he would want in. So I would open the door, let him in at the door he would scratch at the door he come back out and so i would open the door and then he would like go like heading towards the stairs like come on let's go like he wanted to go in he wanted to relax he wanted to chew on his bone he wanted to lay on the couch he just wanted to, to chill um but he wanted me in the house he did not want me outside because if i'm outside then he thinks relax so he's gonna have to get used to being outside again and there was really nowhere for him like just to lay in the grass or on the deck because it was just it was wet it was still it was kind of raining so he didn't want to be outside and not in the tent in the greenhouse and then in the green and then he was like trying to dig stuff up so he was in trouble the whole time <laughs> he was in there um yeah there's gonna be a lot of editing in that video because <laughs> Dexter's getting yelled at a lot oh and then he's crying the neighbor's dog comes out and starts barking and then Dexter wants to play with him and the neighbor dog hates him and so he's like at the fence, just crying for however long, trying to get the dog's attention. And you, I'm like, oh my God. So I'll have to see how annoying that picks up on the, the microphone or not. And then uh, there was a train going by and I don't know what was wrong with this train, but it was hitting these really, really high pitched notes, um, the brakes or something. And it just was freaking him out. He was just, he couldn't handle it. He was crying and crying he couldn't he hated gizmo was like that too when the train would make certain really high-pitched noises um he's very sensitive to it and he just was he was very upset so it was not as relaxing as it could have been if i just shut him in the house but if i shut him in the house he would have just been like trying to destroy the door getting out so <laughs> it's true right the stuff <laughs> Sometimes it's me yelling. Sometimes it's a neighbor yelling. Some, you know, um, exactly. So, and that's why sometimes there's just sound. I just play music. I'm like, I, I can't edit out all the nonsense in the background. We're music on this or I'll do a voiceover. I've had to do that before with the neighbors outside. We're so loud and um, I had to do a voiceover. So um, did anyone, uh, I know a few of you watched the video. Um, Oh, Dexter. So I like I haven't been doing much in the in the in the greenhouse. So I guess I could have done a, a, a quick um, update in the um, in the grow room. Uh, but I was like, I don't really have anything. And I was flipping through something online and I came across that video from last year where I was um, planting out my alyssum. No, actually, someone commented on it. Someone commented on it and said, oh, my God, Dexter stole. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I should make a short of that clip 
where he steals my trowel and the trowel flips up over his face and then he can't see where he's going. And it, it, it's absolutely hilarious. And so I was like, you know what, I'll just make a short and put it out. And then I was like, oh, but, and then in that video, there were so many and then I was like, oh, I remember it. So I put together, it was like a 10 minute long video of outtakes of mainly Dexter, one of my daughters, don't tell her, um, but mainly Dexter just outtakes. And I was like, you know what, this will just, this will just be funny. And I was thinking, you know, he's been so much better behaved in, in the house. He's really calm. He does really, he does really well um, at the park with the little kids. He calms down now. He lets them come up. He still gets excited and will jump up a bit if they get hyper. Um, but, um, you know, he's doing so well. And then today out there, I was like, oh, you're a pill. <laughs> you're a pill. Yeah. So if you haven't checked that out and you like to watch naughty, naughty, silly, busy, 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 busy puppies, um, definitely check out that video from this week. Um, oh my God. I laughed so hard editing the video. I was just like, oh my gosh. Just remembering, remembering all of it coming back. And it's so funny at it now but in the moment when you're trying to film and you're trying to be serious and he's just messing everything up you just you're so frustrated and so sometimes it's hard to to I'm trying to embrace that and I told myself that last year and with the garden like if he tramples stuff if he steps on stuff I'm not gonna get too worked up about it because you know he was just a puppy so now he's a year and a half um, I'm going to expect a little bit more behavior. You're just so busy with shorts for Instagram and YouTube and now making shorts for <laughs> exactly, exactly. At least the shorts for Sid are useful. <laughs> no one watches my other stuff. Hardly any of my, my YouTube shorts. I, I get more views on Instagram than I do on my YouTube shorts. So that's just the way it works. Hey, wild home. That's hard to say a wild home. Welcome in. How are you? Are you from let us all know where you're from oh also if you just type in the word link um then you can give jesse a break and it will drop your channel link and if you type in the word weather and your city it will drop your weather and then we can all compare weather which is always fun um i don't mind doing that in the middle of summer but in the winter it makes me really mad <laughs> um there you go it's working sometimes night mall works sometimes it doesn't so so yeah i i've got i think pretty much everything is planted except for my beans did i say that weird beans um oh you're from british Columbia, and fellow canadian very nice um are you guys getting better weather out there hopefully you guys are getting some sunshine as well um so yeah my cucumber let my lemon cucumber that I forgot to plant. I have that to plant still. And then I have a variety of beans. Um, and I'm just going to do like a mass planting or sewing containers. Um, I waited until it was warm, but then I did them in the winter sewing containers and just did them outside and they did great. So I'm probably going to do that again. I don't know if I'll even bother putting them in the greenhouse or not. Cause if we're getting decent weather and the nights, I don't think nothing's saying below. I'll have to double check saying below 40. Um, coming up. So at that point, maybe I'll pop it in to the greenhouse if it does. I'm here listening, but I have a ton of stuff to pop up. So I won't be chatting much. No worries, Nicole. Just glad to see you here. And she's got, oh my goodness. If you don't follow Nicole, you got to go check out Nicole's garden and check out her tulips that she's got going. And she's going to have even more beautiful um, for Mother's Day. So she is a flower farmer in Nova Scotia, Canada. Yeah. Um, the link... Oh, it doesn't work on your phone. No worries. No worries. So yeah, her, her, I saw those pictures. I was so jealous. I'm like, Oh, why are you getting this? Are you getting so beautiful? 62 acre island on the lake. Oh my goodness. That sounds amazing. Wow. That is beautiful. I will have to go check you out for sure. After make, uh, you'll drop your link. Hopefully I'll be able to check it, um, later. And, um, that sounds don't you know? Yeah. Um, actually, was that more Minnesota? <laughs> I think that was more Minnesota. My mom's um, family's from Minnesota. Um, you betcha. Um, I think that was a little bit more, a little bit more Minnesota than Nova Scotia, but you get the idea. Uh, British Columbia, that just, that sounds magical. 
Wow. So I grew up on the West Coast, but in Oregon, and I have been to um, British Columbia a handful of times. I've actually driven through um, up to Alaska. So I've driven all the way up through British Columbia, and I have been to Victoria a handful of times, and it's beautiful countryside. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All those mountains. Yeah, Minnesota. <laughs> Um, wow, that's exciting. So an island on a lake. Um, we would love to go to Alaska. Victoria's amazing. Yeah, you're not far. <laughs> you're, you're closer than I am. I'm in Toronto um, area. So you're closer than I am to go to Alaska and you might as well. You're like halfway there, right? Um, okay. So it's an island. Is I am assuming there's no road access, right? Um, what zone are you in? Like parts of British Columbia can get pretty darn cold. So is it always boat accessible? Lake, so it's fresh water. Does it freeze over? Do you have access through like a ferry system or are you just like boat? And if you get iced in, you get iced in. Um, I'm, 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 I'm very interested in this. <laughs> hey, Ro, welcome in. How are you doing tonight? Have you, um, oh, did everyone watch, has everyone watched, um, the 40 questions that Tinog, the New Orleans gardener asked a group of the gardening community, a group of 40 questions. And if you go and follow that tag, um, I did one of the videos. Tinox 40. I can't remember what the tag is, honestly. But if you check out the tag, there's a lot of great channels on there. And it was really fun to get to know um, a lot of people better. So um, Ro um, and I tagged Jesse. I don't know if he's done the video yet. <laughs> Chuck did his. I called Chuck hilarious as I knew it would be. And uh, Maureen from Diva in the Dirt. She also did a great job on her video. Very entertaining. So lots of great videos over there if you haven't checked those out. Those are really fun. And if you want to do one, you don't have to be tagged. You can just go ahead and do one and drop the tag and just lie and say, I, I tagged you or whatever. Um, <laughs> anything like that. Um, yours. Did you do one? Um, you have amazing videos. You really need to check. I will. I will. I, I am new to this channel. This is a new channel. I will check them out because this sounds um, really fascinating. I'm actually opening another. I'm going to open a chat right now. And I'm. Oh, oh, I'm already subscribed. <laughs> okay, I'm already subscribed. So I must have met you in someone else's chat. And I just didn't realize the story behind your channel because I've already, I've already subscribed. And um, Heather, oh my goodness, this is my cousin. Heather, how are you doing tonight? Uh, great to catch me live. Well, thank you very much. Um, hope everything's going well with you and the kiddos. Say hi to all the kids and Jordan and everybody. Um, and uh, oh, you want to see my, you want to see my impatience? I'll show you. We'll do another quick, another quick show of the impatience. Here we go. There we go. So I have two different varieties and this one's a mixed. So they are just super healthy and they are going absolutely crazy. So hopefully, um, and then, then the petunias. These are, these are doing really well. I'm really hoping they, all of these give me a bunch of seed tonight, uh, this week, this year, came with um, because I'm really excited to just keep growing those. I think that'll be awesome. My camera keeps slipping on me. There we go. Um, thank you. Ah, uh, can she see me? Hi. <laughs> Oh, she's so cute. A little cousin. Um, yeah, they're doing really well. So this is the first year I've done. I've tried those varieties. I did do impatience last year for the first time and they did good. And so I was excited and they're doing amazing. We, oh dear. We are zone 4A. We are 12 hours north of Vancouver. Oh, okay. Well, well, see, I told you you're close to Alaska. <laughs> the lake does freeze over. We bought a barge. Oh my goodness. This sounds very, very exciting. I actually have a friend up there. She's in, no, something Williams, something. 
She's like right on the border of Alaska and BC. And there's like a big fishing there. Her husband's a fisherman. She says she waved. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Um, I can't remember where it's at, but she's way up there too. I want to say Prince something. Prince, Prince Rupert. Prince Rupert. She's up in Prince Rupert. So it's probably kind of, I guess, maybe where you're at. I don't know. But beautiful, absolutely beautiful countryside for a yikes. <laughs> Good luck with that. Plant all the hostas. They love, they love. Um, yeah, let me try to get this off the screen. Where are we at here? Um, so we have Jesse dropping stuff like always. Oh my goodness. Everyone's sorting seeds and doing their thing. Let me pop on over here to you. Um, I'm all, all, yes, that I am excited about that even more now. Uh, we were talking about that not too long ago, and I can't remember if it was in my chat or someone else's chat. We were discussing the whole geothermal greenhouse idea. And um, was that you in another chat? <laughs> There's so many, keep it straight, but that is, that is fascinating. Um, I've, I remember watching quite a few videos um, a few years ago when we were thinking about trying to do a greenhouse of some kind. And, and so I was looking at like a heat sinks and, um, you know, I started out looking at things like, you know, painting a, a black, uh, a, you know, a big rain barrel and paint it black and stick it in the greenhouse. And then I went like just down this rabbit hole to like basically digging out, you know, this giant geothermal greenhouse and putting the tubing all through and everything. So yeah, I went down that rabbit hole and I was like, yeah, I don't, I think this is beyond us. So <laughs> by six greenhouse with the little heater. And then, um, I showed in my shorts video, if it does get really cold, my husband just goes out and put if, and by really cold, I mean, anything below 40, we go out and put the big, um, it's like a big moving blanket. It's pretty heavy. And then he puts a tarp on top of it to keep it dry. And, um, and that, and that it just helps insulate it and, you know, reduce the heat loss so that the heater isn't, you know, just on the whole time. But it's it stays nice and toasty warm. We'll be down in the, you know, low 30s. And it'll be staying around 60, 65 in the greenhouse overnight. So it's it's doing really well. Um, what do I think about hydroponics? I think hydroponics are absolutely amazing. And I have no interest in them. <laughs> it just it just doesn't appeal to me. I maybe at some point... Um, I know a lot of people start off um, with the little, um, oh gosh, what's the little arrow gardens? Um, and I know Mike has done amazing things over at, um, if you watch Mike's chaotic garden in his um, hydroponic things. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm not interested in them that much. Uh, and I think part of it is because my main, grow a lot of food, right? I do. I grow a lot of tomatoes and peppers and herbs and those things. Um, but my passion is with the flowers. And so to me, you know, I, and I'm also in a townhouse. I have limited space and <laughs> my God, all hydroponics or seeds. That's, that's his, that's his thing. Um, so I don't know. I'm not, I'm not discounting it. Like, I think it's fascinating. And I, did want to try the hydroponic buckets that are stacking. Um, I can't remember that channel. Um, oh, what's his name? He was on Joe's live a couple of weeks ago. He's a big channel and he has like, um, stacking towers and he uses like the five gallon buckets. And so you don't need to use any, um, he does like the cracky method. So you don't need to do any kind of um, pumps. I think to, for me, it just, I just was never that interested in it because I just like, I just like gardening. I like, I like my hands in the dirt. I like growing plants. I like growing. I like doing cut flowers. That's kind of the main reason I garden. I don't garden just for the produce. Um, like I, I like to do like landscape gardening as well. And so fiddling with the numbers and the pH and the chemicals and that, I don't know, that just doesn't interest me at this stage. It might in the future um, when I decide that I need to start growing more things for food year round. <laughs> if I, if I come to that point where I decide I'm going to start growing, you know, and, and, and it's feasible now with the uh, micro tomatoes, right? 
you know, this year I don't want to go all winter without um, my, you know, orange hat tomatoes. And so if that's the case, then um, I like the idea of the hydroponics because it is clean, you know, and you're not getting a lot of dirt and soil in the house. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I'm just not, it just doesn't really interest me. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Like so, a lot of people are not interested in growing flowers. They only want to grow food and that's fine. That's <laughs> do what you want. Right. Hey, Angela, welcome in. How are you doing? Good to see you. Um, yeah, I, I just enjoy playing in the dirt and, um, how do I say this without, I don't mean to sound rude or anything, but to me, it just, it, the idea of hydroponic just feels a little too structured, bossy, <laughs> too many rules. I don't know. I kind of like to just go and wing it. And I don't know, like I've never done a soil test. I just, I don't know. I'm not interested in that aspect of gardening as much. <laughs> <laughs> clinical that's a good yeah it just it doesn't i i'm more i'm definitely more on the creative side right so i'm more in just into the colors and putting stuff together and doing this and that um you know i could see my husband getting more interested in like hydroponics um that's definitely his he's more into kind of like gadgety and fiddly and stuff um yeah like my hands were just caked with dirt my fingernails and i was like ah oh, this is amazing <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I just like the, well, and I like, to me, the, you know, like I, I provide, you know, I do, I add fertilizer and I add amendments and stuff like that. But if I forget or I don't get it right, it, there's still soil there, right? So the plants are still getting something. Um, they're not completely reliant on me for their nutrient balance and all that. So Mike likes both. He goes both ways. So um, that's good. That's, uh, yeah, I, I could see dabbling into the hydroponics more for winter indoor, but see, and Ro, she loves them both too. Yeah. It just, you know, it's just something I've ever really gotten into. I don't watch a ton of videos on, I do watch your videos, Mike. I don't, <laughs> I don't watch a ton of videos like, um, researching hydroponics and all of that. If I did do it, I would definitely be the easiest possible, laziest possible method. Um, probably method or whatever. Um, I watched some of Lisa's videos last year when she was doing it. She really seemed to like it. Um, it just, it seems fussy. Maybe that's the word, you know, you have to have the little pots and the little clay. And, and I mean, that sounds probably sounds ironic coming from someone who is in love with soil blocks, which is fairly fussy as well. So I don't know. Uh, I grow inside if I want food grown by me nine months of the year. See, same here. And I've just always been a summer gardener, right? So I'm not used to having food in the winter time that I've grown. I just, um, Okay. I'm not happy unless I'm a little grubby, but my inside space and a minimalist and OCD. Oh, I'm not. I'm a maximist. <laughs> I'm a max. Is that it? Maximist? Maximalist? Um, I like all the things. Yeah. Definitely not OCD. Um, definitely not a minimalist. <laughs> it's just like, um, how much can I cram in here? Um, I like collecting things. That's how we're going to say it. I'm a collector. I'm a collector of things, plants, all things. I like going thrifting and grabbing things. And yeah. Um, Brampton's chaotic gardener. <laughs> I don't know. Mike, Mike might not like that one. Or Dexter's chaotic gardening. That'd be a good channel name. <laughs> oh my goodness, Dexter. I don't know. He's done so much better inside. Listens to commands now or better. I hope Heather's probably shaking her head like, what are you talking about? He is so much better than when you guys were here. Um, the last time for Sydney's birthday party, we just kept him in his room and he just stayed in there. He didn't even cry. He was totally calm the whole time. It worked out great. Um, you'll share the title. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was just... Um, Brampton's chaotic pugster. There we go. <laughs> um, so I, I think I'm just going to have to be a lot, a lot more strict. Uh, and I'm going to have to go out with the spray bottle or we have like the big soaker hose. I mean, 
um, and, and use that because the spray bottle did work when he was a puppy to, to calm him down and to get him to behave. We did use that a bit and it did work. So <sighs> there's just, there's so many things outside. He's a very reactive dog. So we are working on that, but there's so much outside to get him going. Right. So even He's constantly looking out the window, scanning stuff. When he's outside, he can just hear it, right? So there'll be a bird or a leaf or, you know, we have lots of, we have bunnies in the backyard he keeps chasing. We have squirrels that constantly run along the back fence and the wooden fence. And, you know, the neighbors, there's a lot of dogs. People are out. We have the train. Uh, there's just so many noises for him that hopefully um, when he gets used to being outside and around it all after a bit, he'll, he'll calm down and he won't be quite as reactive. I think that's the word we're supposed to use. Um, obnoxious is another word. Hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to just kind of start to tune some of those things out and he won't just get so excited and overwhelmed all the time. But honestly, when he's out in the backyard, he either wants to be chasing something or on my lap on the lounge chair, which don't get me wrong. I love that too. But when he, um, uh, some place to relax. So I think I'm going to probably bring out, um, I used to always use so long, like when I do my planting and stuff, instead of just using like a kneeler, those little kneeling mats, they're so small and I'm on a hill. And so I'm always, I was always sliding off of it. Like it just, so I just use an old yoga mat and that way I can kind of just scooch up and down, you know, the whole what six feet of 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 yoga mat um space and without having to like get up and reposition everything so that works really well and it was always nice because it gave a spot for um gizmo at who was our previous pug um it gave him a spot to lay so he would lay on them the mat with me instead of having to be on my lap so i tried that last year with dexter he just tried to eat the yoga mat so <laughs> it didn't go as well. So hopefully this year, um, he, it will, it will just give him a place to, to lay down and, and calm down and, and spot. Right. Cause that's really important, um, for dogs, like in the house, if he has a spot like in his room and he can just stay calm. So we need to find a place in the garden out in the yard, um, that I can tell him to go to your spot. And that's where he needs to be if I'm busy doing something. So that, that idea just came. To so I'm going to have to try and figure out where that spot is going to be. It's probably going to be close to where the greenhouse is now, or maybe up on the deck. Just tell him to go up on, you know, find a spot up on the deck. That's his spot so that he can feel comfortable there and not, it, it can stay calm. He doesn't have to freak out all the time. Um, the, I, I was, I was thinking of you and, um, um, Huga, um, when I was doing the outtakes, I knew, <laughs> I knew you guys would get a, a really big kick out of those. So yeah, that was really fun. That was a really fun video to, to put together. <laughs> Dexter says he's already planning uh, for next year's outtake video. <laughs> he's got some ideas. He's got some ideas in store for that one. Today, that today, yeah, he was... Okay. Oh, do you hear him barking? <laughs> he's downstairs. I think he heard me say his name. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Do you remember when he was a tiny... Sydney would bring him up during my lives and he'd just be like super tiny and sleepy. And I'd show you guys to him. Oh, he was so cute and tiny. Now I don't dare bring him up, but he would be all over the place. Um, he is not allowed in the office. Nope, not at all. So this weekend, um, you'll be seeing this video. It's going to be coming out probably. Um, hey, Miss Ann Dale. Welcome in. How are you? I'm glad you're here. Even if you are late. Um, the deck is chaos right now. So I, the ideas for a naked gardening video for Saturday, I don't see how it's going to happen now because any of the things I was thinking of filming, it just, I have no room to film them because the deck is full. So, uh, we have a shed up at the top of the hill and we've had that shed for a and years and years ago, I would guess, my husband was saying five, I would guess more like eight years ago, I painted it with like trim clad because it was all rusty. So it is, it, it, it needs to, it's been needing to be replaced for a while now. And um, a couple weeks ago, Costco had this nice shed on 
So we bought the shed, but we have had nothing but rain since. And so in order to get like, we couldn't carry the whole box through the house. So we have all the parts lined up on the deck for the shed. And normally we store our uh, winter tires behind the shed. We're going to have to take all of that apart and everything. We don't have the winter tires on the behind the shed. They're on the deck. So and we have like, there's like way more tires than we have vehicle wheels for. So we have two trucks, like 10 tires out there. So I don't, I don't, I don't really know what happened. I know my husband said he went and bought some new tires, but I don't know why we have so many and I don't know why they're all on the deck, but they are. So I have two big stacks of tires on the deck. I have the ship backed up on the side. And then we have on the right hand side, we have all the patio stuff all huddled together under the tarp. So I have like my big table. I have all of the chairs and we have two bikes everything is over here. So the deck is just not really usable space. You'll see in the video, like filming it. I had to like, I was practically like doing that. My legs are like this in the video. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing like the half splits just to get my head in um, the section, right? Each vehicle has five wheels, four plus a spare. I, I don't think mine has a spare. It might, I guess. But wouldn't the spare be on the car? Would I have a spare snow tire? I don't know. I'll have to ask him about this, but you're right. Yeah, you're right about the spare. I hadn't thought of that. Jesse is on the ball. Thank you there. So yeah, so that's like, it's just, it's like standing room only on the deck right now. So uh, I can't film what I wanted to film because the only other space in the yard is on the, the hill and that's just, that won't work. So I might have to wait until next year for this idea. You might have the Brampton Gardener naked gardening video, which last year I couldn't come up with anything. And then this year I had two ideas and I don't think I'll be able to eat, do either one of them. Hey, Cindy squirrel off grid. How are you doing tonight? We got a lot of Canadians in here tonight. That's nice. Um, Looking forward to the May 2-4 weekend, everybody. Cindy Squirrel, you are... You're a zone 4 as well, I'm assuming. You're out east of me. I'm assuming... I'm, a, I'm assuming... I'm assuming you're in a 4 zone-ish or whatever. Um, what When do you guys usually plant out? Is it May 2-4 weekend or are you guys usually beginning of June? Um, because... It's funny, like where we are in Southern Ontario, as much as I complain about the weather, we actually are a lot warmer than the surrounding area because of the Great Lakes. So I'm within an hour. So I'm like 30 minutes to Lake Ontario, just over an hour to Lake Erie and just over an hour to Lake, um, well, Huron Bay, just up north, right? So I'm within an hour to hour and a half of three of the Great Lakes. And so it just, it does create kind of different weather patterns where I'm at. Um, and the closer you are to like on to actually parts of Toronto are almost like a zone seven. So, oh, oh, to be, oh my goodness. Eight hours north of me, that's it? And you're that much colder? Oh my God. Are you near Timmins? Um, yikes. Yeah, June 10th for delicates. Okay, so I mean, I'm a 5B and you're a 2B and you're literally, what, two weeks behind me on planting? So because um, cause I've had to wait June for peppers um, before. So that's interesting. That is interesting. 2B. Oh my goodness. I think my parents were a 2B when they were up in Alaska. <laughs> up in Fairbanks was a 2B, but now they're in Anchorage and it's a 4. I think it's a 4B now in Anchorage. It's a 4B in Anchorage and I'm a 5B and yet their last frost date is end of April <laughs> and mine is May 9th um, because of how they, they're situated on the ocean there. But they got a ton of snow. Uh, yesterday. My dad said it looked like they were in a snow globe. So at least we didn't have any 
No hardwood trees grow up here. One hour more north. Okay. Okay. But I was in the right, the right direction. Yeah. Apparently my husband's um, parents have moved up to Timmins. So I've never been up there. Um, but yeah, that sounds, um, I'm going to guess no hardwood trees growing up there. I'm going to guess it's probably a very similar landscape to Fairbank. <laughs> um, just kind of scrawny trees and frozen ground and tundra and uh, lichens. <laughs> Um, that's what they had a lot of up there. Um, even when I, it's funny, even when I go up North from here up into like Muskoka area and stuff, um, you see the change in, in the trees and the, the rock does remind me of, of that or like Eastern Oregon. Um, I grew up on the West coast of Oregon in a like eight zone eight. I didn't even appreciate it. I just complained about it raining. I did not appreciate that. I lived in such a perfect growing climate. Um, but yeah, when you get into Eastern Oregon, it's, it's a lot colder over there and, um, parts of it are like desert and, um, the trees over there are a lot scrawnier than on the West side of the country and um, state, whatever it is. Um, yeah. So we have people from a 2B and then we had people all the way down in Florida. Oh my goodness. We got a wide range of growing dates and i got some of you all are done planting right um jesse what's lisa got lisa got any seeds started this year you guys got anything growing going in the garden i know your um greenhouse took a bit of a tumble um and i know miss ann's got lots going on down there you're a zone nine so you're just warmer than um nicole Nicole's 8B. So she's on the other side of Houston. So you're in a zone nine. She's, they had like that shooting, like the guy went and shot like his neighbors or something. It's like killed five or six people. I think they said that was in Cleveland, Texas or something, right? She's got a lot of stuff in grow bags. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen anything on your channel uh, or on Instagram about what she's growing. Um, That'd be interesting. Yeah, I'd like to see what she's got going on in there. You're just putting things in. See, and that's, uh, I, I just, I find it like we get so, hey, Caucasian Sasquatch, how are you doing? Welcome in. Um, so different and the winters are so different and so much colder here. Um, but yeah, we all end up kind of starting things, planting, you know, a lot of things at similar times and, um, harvesting, you know, like I look to middle of, um, I usually don't get my first, um, this year, if you watch my video um, I'm going to be getting, and I got my tiny Tim's last year early too. Um, I'm going to, my orange hat is, it's very, very yellow, very, very yellow. It's not orange yet. So I'm waiting because I want my first orange hat tomato to be perfectly ripe. So I'm not going to pick it too early. Uh, but it's definitely, it's definitely doing its thing. And I got a lot of tomatoes out there that are going to be, um, oh no. Uh, we don't want the thing to grow still what we have. Grown. Oh, I'm sorry. I see. Yeah. Well, I am, I'm like that about a few things. That's why I don't post some of my stuff on my Facebook page. <laughs> like when I go out and harvest a bunch of tomatoes or something, because then I know my neighbor's going to be knocking on the door. Um, oh no, your aquaponics, aquaponics busted. So I'm not, I can get the fishes on dishes. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Grab some cornmeal and some oil. Um, that's too bad. Yeah. We, we actually had a hydroponics discussion earlier and then this guy comes in and throws a whole monkey wrench in it with aquaponics, which is basically hydroponics with fish. I don't know a ton about it either. Uh, we are supposed to be 8A, but the weather has been much more like 7B. So yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. The weather has been just, it's been crazy. So I, Facebook memories is because it keeps showing apparently in 2010 we were way ahead of the usual weather patterns and i'm seeing pictures of like my peonies almost ready to bloom and my peonies right now are like maybe this can you see my hands where's my other hand there we go 
maybe a foot and foot and a half out of the ground. Some of them, some of them are just tiny still. Um, and I had pictures of, from them of, I had all kinds of stuff growing and blooming really, really early in 2010. And, um, and then we've just had some really, really cold, cold springs, um, since then, uh, was it last year we had snow in May the year before we had snow in May. Um, yeah, it was like May 28th. We had like a snowy hailstorm came through and it killed my, um, Lufa and my cucumelons. Yeah. I use bluegill, um, and some goldfish and koi for my display tank because they're pretty. Well, there you go. See, I get that. I'm all about the aesthetic, <laughs> um, which is why, um, it kills me. Stupid five gallon buckets out there. I got to come up with a better situation for growing along that fence. The problem is, is our fences. They're 20 years old and like we've done some repairs along the way. Um, I don't, I don't know how much longer they're going to last. And so I hate to spend any money putting anything nice along there. Um, and I'm growing in the buckets because I don't want to grow in the ground there because they are old pressure treated lumber. And so I don't want to put food there. Um, so if we do replace it, then, you know, I could probably grow in the ground. I don't know how, how long you'd have to worry about runoff for that or not, but I could wrap them in, in burlap. That's a great idea. That's a great idea, Cindy. Maybe I will have to do that. I probably won't get around to doing that, but it, that is a really good idea. It would definitely look a lot nicer than it is now. I do worry about them kind of molding though, um, because we do, we do, we've had some really wet summers the last, I actually grew a leak. I don't remember planning an idea for a terrible joke. Do not tell me you're going to take that and put it under the sink. Please, please do not tell me you're going to take that and put it under the sink because that would be a terrible joke. Um, oh my God. Speaking of terrible jokes, um, have you been watching wicked awesome gardening's shorts videos lately? She's decided to do, um, a new short. I don't know if she's doing one every day, but she's doing some gardening shorts. So today she did a May the 4th, uh, star Wars gardening short. So if you haven't seen that, go check, go check out. Um, if you need some dad jokes, gardening, sorry, that was the chair. I swear. Uh, if you need some go check out Danny's channel. Um, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I've seen the meme where someone takes a leak and puts it under the sink and under the kitchen sink. And they're like, honey, I think there's a leak under the sink. And then the husband opens it and it's like, ah, but I'm bomb. Yeah. Equally, equally cheesy. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, so this weekend is going to be super busy. We are going to be over at um, starting a new job, a big job on Tuesday. So most of our jobs are, I work with my husband, we do like drywall taping, stucco repair, and most of them are kind of just small one, two day jobs. And um, but we're starting a big job and it could, I don't know how long this is going to take. It's an apartment building could be there for quite a while and long days and really bad travel. It's like an hour each way with decent traffic. Um, and it's like right during prime gardening season. And I'm like, really? It have been, you know, two weeks ago when we've had all this rain. No. Okay. So this always seems to happen. We always seem to be super busy right during like May and June. Um, in the past, we used to, we used to have a big job every, every summer, uh, a one or two floors at the college in the dorms. And it would be a good six to eight weeks and uh, seven days a week, full days. And it was always right when the university lets out. So it was always started in, you know, April, May, and took us through like June, July. And so 
you know, we had wanted to widen the garden for quite a number of years and it just, we never had time because when it was finally, you could dig in the ground, uh, the ground wasn't frozen enough anymore. Uh, we were, we were just swamped with work and just getting stuff planted in the garden was, it was enough at the time. And so, um, came <laughs> hi food plants. How are you? Welcome in. Um, let us know where you're at. You can, um, type in the word link and it will drop your link into the chat as well. Um, yeah, so we, uh, we were on lockdown here in Ontario for three months, everyone and started in February. Nope. Started in March, middle of March. And so we were like, well, no, no time like the present. Um, so that was when we went in and we widened all of the beds before then we just had a lot more grass in the middle and we went in and we just made a path up the middle and we widened all of the, Oh, wow. <laughs> you are really close by. Welcome in. Uh, nice to see you here. A lot of Canadians tonight. That's awesome. And, um, and so, yeah, so that is, um, what, what gave us the opportunity to actually widen the garden. Although no stores were open to actually get like, we could get potting mix at Costco, but like seeds, plants, like they're just, that wasn't, um, a lot available. And so that's why I went with, um, a lot of this, you know, just basic, um, seeds from the dollar store. We planted a, a ton of like asters and cosmos and snapdragons and stuff like that. Uh, some stuff that I had, um, yeah. <laughs> welcome in. Are you, are you, ex you must be excited about the weather coming this week, <laughs> starting tomorrow, starting tomorrow. So, um, I don't know exactly when my husband's going to start on the shed. Um, I'll be helping some of it, but I'm going to be doing a lot of weeding. I've got a lot of coming up in the beds that I don't need there. Um, I've, I've noticed like just boom this week, a bunch of, I've got the dandelions and then I have the, um, and I'm going to have to look into it or not because I always called it burdock, but I'm not sure if it's actually burdock or if it's wild rhubarb or if they're the same thing or if they're related or I'm not exactly sure, but just behind our yard is a fence and it's like wild on the other side. It's just full of weeds, thistles, and all kinds of just terrible, terrible plants out there. And so, you know, a lot of times they come, they blow in and they come, times they're coming through the hill. Um, so we get a lot of those that I will dig out. So uh, I've left them all in, like I'll leave them, I'll leave them all in because it is kind of pretty. Um, but some of the other stuff now. And if I want any of that for medicinal purposes, I can just go right behind the house. I can walk around and go and there. So don't think I'm in any way, my, my yard is so small that anything I pull out of it is not going to affect the ecosystem at all. <laughs> That's not a problem. Um, 2010 was the end of an El Nino. Next spring, we will be back into an Omega block is putting two weeks, things two weeks behind here this year. Ah, well, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, bring on El Nino. I'm telling you. <laughs> but I mean, that said, we've had it, it. It's like our whole has shifted. We like we didn't get a frost the last two years until first week in November. I think it was like November sixth or seventh, and then even into December, like we had pretty pretty decent warm weather. Um. We normally are in t-shirts until usually the weather changes like right before Halloween. That's usually, it's like, we'll be super warm and hot. And then like the weekend before Halloween is when it drops and we usually get cold and rainy and miserable for Halloween. Uh, Snow at October 13th there. Wow. Ooh. Cause I think our average last, no, first frost day is middle of October. So October 15th or, or there, um, we've had, we've had snow in October for sure. We've had frosts in, in September before, um, I had a frost come to my tomatoes years ago, but the last several years we've had, the frost has been later and later and later and our spring has been later and later and later. So I don't know. I think it's just, I don't know if it's like, if, you know, cause in the fall they're like, Oh, we're warming, you know, climate change and we're warming. And then in the spring, it's like, 
it's colder. So I don't know if it's as much like, I think it's more shifting. I don't know if that's a thing. Um, that's just my theory. Um, I could be totally wrong. <laughs> As you know, I am not a meteorologist. I am not a weatherologist or whatever you want to. Meteorologist, all weather, that encompass everything. All of it, maybe. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, it's been, we've had a lot of early mornings around here lately. My daughter signed up for a early morning activity on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then for some reason, as soon as I wake up, I, I was awake before six this morning anyway. So I had some early mornings and, um, I'm going to be, I was out in the garden, out in the greenhouse today. Um, hopefully I'll have the video. I did two kind of two videos. Um, hopefully I'll at some point tomorrow, the other one should be up on Sunday and, um, you, you can see the chaos that is my backyard, but it will give a nice, before and after <laughs> of the deck. Um, and it's hard to believe that, you know, in another month, I'm going to be sitting out there in my lounge chair and all of that. Right. So, uh, so promise line ranch is going to be live, um, at nine o'clock my time. So in 20, 19 minutes, they will be live. Um, one of the nights I didn't go live and then they didn't go live either. And I was like, I should have gone live tonight. I could have gone long, <laughs> um, but I wasn't on, but they are. So yeah, there's actually, there's a lot of live nights. Um, thank you so much, everyone that came in. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, make sure to hit the drop, type in the word link and it will drop your link so that you can all connect with everyone else in the chat. And um, thanks for coming. The plants are doing good. They smell amazing. I wish you could smell. Um, I've been doing a lot of sewing, but that's going to be on hold. I'm going to be focusing just on planting and work coming up and packing lunches. That's the worst part of, of working those jobs is having to pack lunches every day. <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much, everybody. Firm lands because I'm going to be just tidying things up here, but I am going to be going to bed early. And I love you all. Thank you so much for coming in. And I'll see you when I see you.